Since the introduction in 2011, it's gone up in price from a dollar all the way up to now $35,000 as it slowly gained mainstream adoption and found its way into people's portfolios as a way to further diversify. However, some of its biggest challenges have been the recognition of Bitcoin as a legal source of currency or store of value from a central point of authority. For example, the United States has pushed for more oversight and taxation. China has banned and discourages their citizens from participating in it. And overall, Bitcoin is still struggling to be recognized and endorsed on a large scale as a method of payment, but that might soon change, thanks to a brand new recent announcement that El Salvador aims to be the first country in history to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. Which I gotta say is pretty big news for all of us, regardless of where we live, for reasons I'm about to discuss shortly. But in terms of this headline, as of right now, El Salvador is largely a cash economy. 70% of their citizens don't have a bank account or a credit card, and more than 20% of their GDP comes from remittances or money sent home from other locations, of which is subject to excessively high fees for international transfers that could take days to arrive or require physical pickup. Bitcoin, on the other hand, could solve those issues entirely while allowing their citizens to transfer money anywhere in the world for a fraction of the cost in a fraction of the time. Then, in addition to that, the president of El Salvador also tweeted that alongside using Bitcoin as legal tender, there would be no capital gains tax on profit as a currency. He would offer immediate permanent residence to cryptocurrency entrepreneurs and as a reminder, El Salvador also has no property tax. Now on paper, it's fantastic, and if it's successful, it could be implemented around the world and boost the value of Bitcoin. But there are a few major hurdles that have to be overcome for Bitcoin first, the number one being transaction speeds. See, as it is right now, Bitcoin is not exactly fast. I mean, sure, it's faster than initiating an ACH transfer with your dinosaur bank and then waiting three to seven days for it to clear. But it has not been fast enough to pay for your groceries and not have to wait 30 minutes at the checkout counter for your transaction to complete. That's because when you initiate a transfer on a basic level, that transaction needs to be recorded and confirmed by miners on the blockchain. And those transactions are generally prioritized by the fees that you pay. Sometimes this could be as quick as 10 minutes and other times as long as an hour, but that presents a few other problems. First, waiting around for an hour while your Bitcoin transaction is confirmed isn't exactly ideal, and it's really inefficient to expect that people and businesses would want to wait that long. The second, because of how volatile the price of Bitcoin is with 100% certainty by the time your transaction has confirmed, you will have either overpaid or underpaid for your item depending on what Bitcoin is trading at. And third, speaking of transaction times being prioritized by fees, that then brings us to this. These transactions are not free. Because every transaction must be confirmed by a miner for a fee, and there's only so much space available at any given point in time, the more people transact at the same time, the higher the network congestion rate, and either the more expensive your transaction will be or the longer you're going to have to wait. Like as you can see over the last two years, transaction volume has increased significantly for Bitcoin, slowly turning Bitcoin's transfer speeds into more like a traffic jam. Unless of course you pay a slightly higher fee to expedite that process. In terms of how much though, it really depends on how much you're transferring and the amount of money you pay depends on the amount of data you're sending. On average though, low priority transactions are paying about 35 cents and high priority transactions are paying just over a dollar. But these are averages and that could go up substantially depending on how much you're sending. Now, of course, the good news of this, though, is that the cost of transaction is still significantly less expensive than a same-day ACH transfer with Bank of America or sending an international wire transfer with Chase. So in certain aspects, Bitcoin is a much more efficient way to move money around anytime, anywhere. But in terms of being able to pay your groceries with it, it's still not as optimal as paying with cash or a credit card. And third, like I mentioned, there's a lot of price volatility, meaning one moment it's up and the other it's down. This means you could be standing in line to pay for your groceries, and by the time you reach the checkout counter, Elon Musk has tweeted some FUD, and all of a sudden, the groceries now cost you 15% more than you were expecting. So that's why they've partnered with a company called Strike, which uses something called the Lightning Network to expedite transactions nearly instantaneously. They say that fees are so low that you could customize how and when you send your money down to the minute. And they followed up with, this will allow billions of people around the world to access the financial system in a simple, low-cost way, fulfilling the original vision and promise of Bitcoin. Well, evidently it's working for El Salvador because back in March, this app became the number one most downloaded app in the country. However, this now brings us to the second roadblock of Bitcoin actually becoming a legal tender, and that would be actually passing. Now, like I said, this is a proposal being sent to Congress, but as their politics are organized over there, this actually has a pretty high chance of passing. El Salvador is a country which unfortunately has seen its fair share of violence and corruption. And recently, their new president runs and controls the majority of Congress. 
meaning pretty much whatever he proposes and says is pretty much guaranteed to pass because they have the majority of votes. Politically, critics do worry that the recent removal of several judges along with the Attorney General allows them to pretty much do whatever they want without anyone opposing them. And obviously that brings into question the future of their political system including potential sanctions with the US. But politics aside, as far as this current topic of Bitcoin under their current political system, it has a very high chance of actually going through. Then within 24 hours of that announcement, Paraguay also announced that they too would look into embracing Bitcoin. And once you start looking into this even further, it's easy to see the trend. Throughout the last decade, Latin America has faced difficulties with inflation, rate hikes, and defaults, meaning their currencies lose value at an extraordinary rate. That's led to what's called the dollarization, which is where another country uses the US dollar in exchange of its own. But now that's beginning to shift towards Bitcoin in a move that could soon follow in many more places further legitimizing Bitcoin as a store of value. Now, before we get into my own thoughts on this, I have to say it's kind of mixed. On the one hand, it's important to understand that El Salvador has not exactly been the most stable country. And it's yet to be seen if this move is really coming from the right intentions. Now, sure, it's good news for Bitcoin and any further adoption is really one step closer to one day being worth $500,000. But it also might just be a PR move to garner more positive media in light of US sanctions and it's too early to tell for sure. Now also tax wise, even though it sounds really exciting to go and move there and pay absolutely no capital gains tax, if you live in the United States, you're required to pay capital gains tax anywhere in the world regardless of where you live. So logistically, it just sounds like it's way more hassle than it's worth. And it's probably way easier just to pay your taxes than it is to start over in a new country who's still trying to find their footing. So overall, the way I see it, yes, this is good news for Bitcoin. Yes, this is good news for El Salvador. And yes, I do think that if it's successful, other countries are going to follow. However, turning Bitcoin into a universally recognized global currency is easier said than done. Although this is a step in the right direction, as long as it's done with good intentions, which I really hope it is. But I'll admit I'm not as educated on the political system over there as I should to really make too many comments about this. And lastly, speaking of all things Bitcoin, you may have seen that about two months ago, I made a video calling the new Bitcoin credit card a disaster. This is a product introduced that would give its users unlimited 1.5% cash back in Bitcoin, along with the $250 sign-up bonus after you spend $3,000 in the first three months. But after running all of the numbers, I concluded that it was an absolutely horrible deal because they had an annual fee of, wait for it, $200 a year. So of course, this is what I had to say at the end of the video. And guess what? To my utter amazement, I am shocked, but they reached out to me personally. They said they would be removing the annual fee, and then they sent me this. This card itself is actually not so bad anymore. Although I'll be honest, it's still not as good as the City Double Cash Rewards credit card, which offers you 2% unlimited cash back on everything. But the fact that this one has no foreign transaction fees and gives you 1.5% unlimited cash back in Bitcoin makes this a lot better than a lot of the other free credit cards in the market. So because they actually listened and they removed their annual fee, which I said was the only thing holding me back from actually getting this card and recommending it, if you guys are interested in getting this card too, I will link to it down below in the description. But overall, like I said, I think all of these updates are really positive for Bitcoin and the entire financial system in general. El Salvador wanting to make Bitcoin a legal tender would be a huge milestone for any country. But still, I hope this is being done for the right reasons, for the well-being of their citizens, and not so much for good PR. If all of this does go through, however, and it's successful, I would not be surprised at all if other countries begin implementing this as well. I think El Salvador is a great starting point. I see a lot of advantages, and I think this would be a good push for Bitcoin long term. But like I said, expect to see a lot more volatility. And for myself personally, I am still sticking with my goal of allocating 5% of my entire portfolio between a mix of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And that's it. Until then, anything could happen. But I see this as very exciting news. And I'm really excited to see where this goes long term.